RS. Congratulations. We're going to do a full delivery of this motorcycle, starting with what we always start with, which is a tire safety warning. Ride like you're riding in the rain for the first 50 to 100 miles as you are acclimated to the motorcycle and as well as breaking the silicon off of the tires, which has a silicon coating on it to help preserve shelf life and pop it out of the hole. The tires on these are going to be 17 inch wheels front and rear, and they are right now outfitted with your Metzler Rotex. We're going to have the luxury of the 90 degree valve stems coming out of the spoke for the BMW, and that is going to include your tire pressure monitoring system. The tire pressures are going to be 36 42. 36 in the front, 42 in the rear. We have our cross drilled floating rotors with our Brembo readily mounted calipers led with still braided brake lines. Now leads up to our master cylinder. Our master cylinder is going to have a sight glass on the front for fluid levels and fluid clarity. I'm going to go around the bottom portion of this motorcycle for the rest of it and get back into handlebar controls and instrumentation last. So we'll hit now our suspension, which our suspension, like our braking system, both have hydraulic properties to condensate and draw moisture, so we want to service as per our owner's manual. We have the gold fork legs on this RS that designates that it has the DDC, Dynamic Damping Controlled Suspension. Going further back, we're going to see our individual radiator here. One single radiator across the front of this machine that is going to be water cooling a portion of our motorcycle. The rest of the machine's uh, air cooling capacity is utilized with these external cooling fins on the front of the engine here. With the new water cool design, our fuel injection module comes in from the top. Exhaust header comes out from the bottom, keeping a nice tight tuck around the front of the motorcycle engine. As we come further back, we're going to have uh, visibility on the starting motor right behind the right cylinder and then our black plastic cover here is covering our battery our battery is behind this cover I will go under and show you a toolkit to be able to remove that Allen key to remove the side cover going to the bottom portion of the motorcycle here we're gonna have our foot peg which is a collapsible foot peg with a feeler gauge on it so it can come up when you're hitting those hard twisties up in the mountains of Virginia here our brake pedal is going to be connected to a rear brake master cylinder with a steel braided line going to our ABS module and a rubber hose going to our overflow for our master cylinder reservoir, which is going to give us a clear cup for fluid levels and fluid clarity. Our pillion peg is collapsible and the pillion peg rest is completely removable with two bolts from the subframe, which is detachable from the mainframe. We have our chrome exhaust pipe option on this particular machine. And then our single-sided swing arm. This bike features a paralever shaft drive system. With the paralever shaft drive, we're going to have the quick removal capability with the five lug nuts. Again, our 90-degree valve stem. And our tire pressure in the rear is... 42. 42 pounds. He passes the quiz. While we're in this area, we can go ahead and start to hit on things like our paneer. So I'm going to grab the key out of your navigation preparation. We have two levers, one open, one release. If you put the key in the lock cylinder, we can turn it clockwise for open, and that'll open. This is where we've stashed your Virginia State inspection paper. We have a nice shelf and retaining elastic bands here. If we want to remove this veneer system all the way, we turn counterclockwise, hit the release, and it comes off that quick and easy. So now you can see your hole that we're going to use this little bobbin to reinstall it and this grab bar at the bottom. Quick and easy reinstallation. Turn your key back to a neutral position, keeping both of those levers down so no one else can access your goodies. Coming around the back of the motorcycle, we're going to see our clear turn signals with amber balls to keep us compliant. We have an LED brake light system in the back right here. Our license plate is lit to stay compliant. And we have all of our beautiful mudguard reflectors and all that happy jazz. Continuing around the motorcycle, we have our correlating left pannier system. And now we can visually see our paralever shaft drive system. You currently own a BMW with the paralever system, so you know how that operates and feels. But it is our shaft drive system with a hinging element, hence the rubber boot right here, so we can have a more performance-oriented feel with our shaft drive. This top portion is our torsion bar which is also having a retainer over it to cover our still braided brake line and our speed sensor pickup for the rear ABS and ASC. Moving forward on the machine now, we're going to have our gear shift mechanism and our left collapsible foot peg with fueler gauge. 
This is a linkage system that is connected to our Gear Shift Assist Pro. While we're at Gear Shift Assist Pro, we are opening the throttle or have the throttle open, not chopping the throttle on upshifts, and we close the throttle 100% to downshift clutchlessly with the Gear Shift Assist Pro. If you like to ride it like a normal motorcycle, feel free. It'll still operate with a clutch normally so you can play and do your normal riding characteristics. I'm going to show us the seat removal now, which is right here under the pillion seat. We can twist that to remove our passenger seat, which gives us access to the toolkit I promised you I would show you. With one thing I like to emphasize, this is a tool. It is the handle for our screwdriver, but it is also our oil fill removal. So that is something to keep an eye on, not to lose that tool. We're going to be also outfitted with a 14 millimeter, an 8, and a 10 millimeter, and our Allen keys. Underneath the back, there is a little bit of storage capacity for yourself right here. Removing this key, we're going to go ahead and, since it is a key fob, we can keep that in our pocket all the time. So right now, while we're doing the demo, we'll put it into our navigation system that will secure our Navigator 5 to the motorcycle. The rest of the machine engine, there's not a lot of detail for me to go over with you on this side, except for you do have an oil filter spin on under your left cylinder. On the other side of the machine, right in that same area, is where you'll locate your sight glass for fluid levels there. I love what you did with accessorizing the cylinder with the valve covers. These are a beautiful attribute that blend very nicely with the motorcycle and blend back into the pannier with the gray panniers. I know you wish they were color matched, but I think that looks beautiful as the way they manufactured it there. Now, one other thing on the body of the motorcycle is our windscreen. Our windscreen is four position adjustable. We have the low position and the tall position. This would be low, low low tall and then we can remove these four bolts slide the screen up onto a higher position for high high and a low high position now if you want to get on either side of the motorcycle one or the other i'm going to go over the handlebar controls with you you choose this size i'm going to jump on this side so we can view this together first of all we have everything being able to be used with gloves on bmw has now have it where we can just slide and make changes to our brake as well as our clutch with gloves on. Just sliding it through instead of having to pull the lever and, and slide it. So this will help you find that perfect area for friction zones for what you like. We have a rheostat in the housing here that instead of a push-pull cable it is now ride-by-wire on the BMW motorcycles. We have our heated grips where you're gonna have off, low, and nuclear or high. You're very hot. You have your mode selection to go through our different modes, which I will demonstrate when we get back into the instrumentation. Our navigation, we have a lock cylinder on the side that we can turn, pull a plate, and move, put our navigation system right in its place. This is a cover plate that will keep our pens sealed and waterproof while we're not using the navigation system. Next we have our keyless ride, which is just as if we turn the key, we push that button, as well as our steering column lock. We can turn this bad boy all the way to the side and actually lock our steering column. Another quick burst, we'll pull it out. So it's a constant burst. I find full steering stop, come back a few millimeters, hold, locks it into place. Quick unlock, back to normal operation. Our fuel fueler is something that we can operate without the key as well now. We just pull this tab up and leave it up when we're pushing it closed as well. That's when you see this little chrome piece right here. People banging on it could deteriorate that and prematurely wear that little pen. So we don't want to have that as a problem. On the left handlebar controls, we're going to have our high beam at the very top where they flick forward with the trigger finger, flick back with the intermittent flash. Cruise control is sliding it over, hitting set. You can do resume, you can change little increments, you can constant hold up or down to variate your speed. It usually stays within a one mile an hour tolerance, uphill, downhill. It is amazing with the Boxer Power Plant. We have our hazard lights over here, our trip and information buttons, and multifunction controller. These I'll demonstrate once we have the instrumentation up. 
ABS and traction control are switchable on this machine. Not only are they attenuated through the mode selection, but you can also turn them off manually once you make that decision to do that. We have our electronic suspension that we can modulate. And if you're ready to start seeing these options, we can go ahead and let you turn the key on for the very first time. So reach forward and just hit the on button. That's it. Just do one quick burst for turning on. The only time we'll do a constant hold is steering stops. You saw the machine queue up. And we're going to have different options for our, our board here. First thing, I'm just going to go over the majority of the simple stuff here. Our speedometer, our gear indicator, we have our trip, and then we have our information board, we have our electronic suspension board, and we have our mode selection. Across the top is our tachometer. To the far right, we have our fuel. Now, I can change this display, which is my favorite thing to do on this bad boy. We have three different options. So we have style zero with the most amount of information on the display. We can hold the information button, change it to display one, which is really thrifty because we just go down to the information in the mode selection and we can bring up the other information quickly with the hit of the button, but we don't have to see it all the time so we don't have too much going on. But now we're gonna have our gear indicator, our timepiece, and our tachometer larger, more uh, apparent on the screen. We're going to have that little black bar right there that moves across and lets us know where we can be on the motorcycle due to RPMs. The light off the camera is probably making it modulate. It's inside or outside right now. So that bar will dictate how far you should be in the RPM realm with that engine temperature and it'll move and slide across. We can change again from style 1 to style 2 and go a real basic display. We're going to have our gear indicator, our timepiece, style our information button, our mode selection, and then our large tachometer if these buttons are harder to see for you. Then we're going to go into having our, um, I'm going to go back to the most informative display for us, the zero. So this time we're going to look at the odometer. We have our miles, trip one. We have our trip two. We have our setup, which we can enter. If we enter our setup, we have our GPS time on, yes or no. We have our different mode to uh, enter for user mode. We have our clock, which user mode is letting you modulate where you want all your settings, which we'll go into in depth later. Shift indicator on or off, brightness of the screen, clock format, time form or date format, and basic or custom board computer. So to modulate these, we hit the information button. We scroll through them really quick, but we don't need to change anything except for once we get to we exit, we hold the information button to exit. So we're going to go back to normal odometer. Now we're going to scroll through our information. We had our display changes. We have our ambient air temperature, engine temperature, range on fuel tank, miles per hour consumption average one and two, average speed, our tire pressure monitoring system, which will display once the machine is operating and rolling the tires and sending the signal to the ECU, then it'll like, hey, we've got this tire pressure, that tire pressure. It typically is within a two pound tolerance that I've seen, either high or low. We have date, we have our oil check, and back to our style. Now if we go to the one button that I have to hit on the right, which is our mode selection, we have road, dynamic, user, and rain mode. I'm going to leave us in road mode for right now, but I did show you rain, road, dynamic, and user. Now we have our electronic suspension, which is on the left handlebar. We can have a modulation from dynamic to road, or for constant hold of that button, we'll be able to change from single with gear to up riding or back to single up riding. So the cruise control we know how to operate, the ABS and traction control is the next thing I can hit. We have two flashing lights at the top, we have ABS and we have ASC. With a little one second hold, I turn my trash control off. That light stays as a constant orange saying that Mark made the conscious decision to turn me off. I am now in control of the motorcycle, or Mark's in control of the motorcycle, not me the machine. Another constant hold of that button, I can modulate them both off. So now I have ABS and trash control off. A little, another little burst will turn my trash control back on, but leave my ABS off. If I was in a position at any time that I just wanted in the safest mode and didn't want to modulate through all these goodies, this machine will come on every single time in the safest possible mode. So we turn it off, let her hold for a few seconds. When I turn this machine on, I should now see blinking lights for ABS 
and traction control. So now, again, you would have to make the conscious decision to turn that bad boy off. The only thing I really haven't shown you is heated grips. Heated grips, you get your indicator right there next to the gear indicator, high or nuclear, low and off. That is going over most everything on this motorcycle, unless you have some questions for me on this beautiful blue and white R1200 RS. Everything's good? That's true. Congratulations on taking ownership of a brand new 2016 BMW R1200 RS from Frontline Eurosports, and we hope this is an awesome addition to your arsenal at home already. Thank you.